Hi, I'm Dan Perez from Teach Me Tricking, and in this video I'll go over a strategy for how to learn or develop twisting techniques such as corkscrew without crashing. I teach my students how to do this by establishing a base skill and then following a progressive build order. So you can summarize the strategy as add a little bit of twist at a time. You can use it with any skill, and with this approach we're deviating from the traditional head into the air, start twisting, and stop once you've gotten all the way around. The benefit of that method is a quick result, as in sometimes a student can learn the twist in a couple of tries, but the drawback is uncertainty, and that uncertainty can result in a loss of control, which could mean a crash or just an inconsistent outcome. So this tactic is much more reliable, and we can see an example here in action. Keeping a consistent setup, I start with backflip as my base skill to develop, then I bump up to Arabian, which is a half a twist, and then eventually up to the backfull. So in this example, I've avoided simply adding a twist to my backflip by including one additional step. Then I switch to Butterfly, which a lot of people struggle with transforming into a Butterfly Twist, upgrading to Semi Twist, which almost never gets mentioned as a step in that journey, and adding another consistent 180 to Hyper Twist takes me one step beyond a traditional B Twist. You can change the setup and play again, and something that not everyone knows off the top of their heads is that off-axis twisting techniques and tricking are remarkably similar to their gymnastic and tumbling counterparts, so much so that you can pretty much learn one and adapt to become the other. In this example, I am replacing that backflip base skill with a gainer takeoff, and then translating the Arabian as the back 180, and then translating that back full to become a corkscrew. Hopefully the similarities in techniques are apparent as you watch them back to back. This doesn't just work with inverts, you can do it with vertical kick tricks as well. The catch is, you have to change position back and forth between starting stances if you want to build rotation while keeping the same landing. So the pattern goes, full intervals will start from one stance, while half intervals for each rotation will start in the opposite stance. If that sounds confusing, it's because it is confusing. But understanding the relationship between tricks based on the amount of spin they have is exactly how you learn new kicks by building off of old ones. So for example, when building cheat kicks in 180 degree increments, it's worth knowing that you can make a cheat 720 or a cheat 900 easier by starting in one stance and harder by starting in the other based on the fact that you're actually changing the amount of rotation in the trick. Using this knowledge to your advantage makes the progression from tornado kick to cheat 9 much more consistent and realistic. Not to mention, you become aware that there are two different cheat 9s. To follow this strategy, you must start with a base technique, as in some kind of takeoff with some kind of landing. For vert kicks, you have to change your starting position to the opposite stance for every 180 because you're keeping the end position constant. You learn to control the rotation and the technique as your base builds in progressive order, and you can climb as high as you still have that control. For my programs, I created a system of terminology called True Kick Terminology, which consistently categorizes the moves based on their rotations and components instead of their nicknames. This helps instructors and students make sense of the skills they're trying to learn or teach. When building inverts, you keep the starting position constant and update the landing position with each increase in rotation. In this video, I'm developing first a front flip and then a back flip on a trampoline, again by 180 degree increments. The thing to keep in mind as you watch this play out is that each step is a very important checkpoint on the path to however much twist you're trying to get. It's not enough to just get there. You have to actually be good enough at that rotation to allow you to proceed. Notice that I've got an extra bounce to my landings, which is kind of like ensuring I could continue if I wanted, so that's a critical piece of the progressive build order strategy. Of course, you don't need to have a trampoline to do this with inverts, but you do need to have a reliable base on which to build. Also, a trampoline helps on account of all the bounciness. Another major consideration is that you can build by whatever amount you want. So if 180 feels like too much at a time, you can drop it down to 90 degrees, or 1. Regardless of the equipment or setup you're using, regardless of the skill you're training, the approach stays the same. The big question you might have at this point is, how do I change my position for inverts, as in, where should I be facing? The answer is you adjust your position in the direction of your twist. So you'd stand in your landing position and then turn 90 degrees the way you'd like to do the whole twist eventually, and that's your next checkpoint. This can take some getting used to, and you'll have to update the answers for each new trick, but over time you'll become very aware of what you're doing and where you're going. If you do this correctly, the end result is controlled, consistent landings, building towards higher tier skills all the time, without ever crashing. Obviously a lot of details go into the technique and execution of a given trick, so consider this strategy to be your general approach. It's not too different than the usual learn a cork, then a double, then a triple, other than the size of the pieces with which you're working. Smaller pieces equals larger success rates, and the value in this approach is found in the level of control one gains by following it. Personally, I never start something complicated, like a twist in the air, without a very specific plan for how I'm going to finish it. For safety's sake, I highly recommend to instructors that they share this sentiment with their students. Now you have a better idea of what you're seeing on the screen. 
So let's watch this play out in the context of using tricking skills to learn a cool connection like Gumby Swing Through Cork. I'm using a Gumby setup, which is kind of like a cartwheel on your opposite side, and I start with that backflip as a base, upgrading my 180s again. As I complete the journey with backfull, I change two things. One, I'm now using a carry Gumby setup, which is a fancier version but in this case was an aesthetic choice. And two, I've changed the transition into my back rotations from pop, which is jumping off both feet together, to swing through, which means I'm jumping off just the one leg. Watch that progression again without text, and see how I'm able to turn a back tuck into a corkscrew by building in controlled pieces, landing on my feet, which I also recommend, and simply changing the transition takeoff pairing. On this second side, the carry gumby transforms back into the regular gumby setup, but the change to swing through is what makes the back full a cork, and at no time did I have to begin a regular gainer and simply start twisting. Instead, I build a twist in a progressive order by adding smaller increments to my controlled base skill, and the result is a gumby swing through cork. Total number of crashes, zero. Total number of takes to film, one. For more teaching strategies like this one, check out teachmetricking.com or pick up my program at cinematicmartialarts.com. Thanks for watching.